variety of munitions over the last week. Um, we have used, I guess, the general categories we used impact munitions. Those may be uh, 40 millimeter launchable foam nosed impact munitions. Uh, the rapid response team and patrol and uh, the rapid response team both carry that type of munition. Uh, we, the rapid response team also carries uh, what's called the FN303, it's a small plastic projectile that has a little bit of inner powder in it to provide some radiant energy. Um, Sorry, can you repeat what that Can you speak up number is? FN303. Uh, so those are generally the, the impact munitions we've used. We've used uh, distraction devices, so um, the, the munitions that you see when we toss them out there, they do a little pop and then a bang. Uh, those are distraction devices, again, designed to startle uh, and also influence to get folks to start moving. Stop doing what they're doing, it's dangerous, and move away. Uh, we've used riot control agents, uh, CS gas, um, also uh, OC, uh, pyrotechnic gas. Uh, we've used some amount of, of smoke. Uh, all three of those look very similar. Uh, the munition uh, is deployed one of two ways. Either we can launch it from a 40 millimeter launcher, and those are the ones that you see going out at a height, separating into three small pieces and falling down and, and smoking on the ground. Uh, and that can be smoke, CS, or OC. Uh, we also have a hand tossed canisters uh, that we can deploy, and those. Those you'll see are either one of two things. They're either a solid canister that you can toss out and it just smokes and stays in one piece, or the ones that we toss out and they separate into three separate pieces and again, uh, smoke. Um, and again, all those can contain either CS, OC, or smoke. Uh, pepper spray's been used. Pepper spray or the So we, uh, our mobile field forces, and I believe also our responsible is use pepper spray, the spray. Uh, when people talk about pepper balls, uh, different teams use pepper balls. We don't carry the actual pepper ball munition system. Our FN-303 round, uh, it, it can deliver different payloads. It can be either just a clear liquid, it can be a marking pink paint, or it can contain powdered uh, pava, which is basically pepper. Um, and we've used, I'm sure, a variety of those depending on the situation. And how do you decide what to use? So it's really situational, right? So um, if we have a specific person that we see in front of us engaging in active aggression, generally we use an impact munition because we're trying to be very you know, specific about who we're affecting. If there's one person, we're able to change their behavior without influence or affecting the rest of the crowd, we do that. That's the, that's the best choice, right? If we are seeing uh, a large crowd and we have people, you know, four or five or six rows back throwing objects at the police. We can't see them. We can't launch an impact munition directly at them. That's generally when we start weighing, can we, can we leave the area? That's the first option. Can we safely leave the area? Uh, if we have to stay, can we get the crowd to leave the area? And we try to use the communication, the sound truck, and, and, and tell them, hey, it's not safe anymore. We need you to leave. And if that doesn't work, then we have to disperse the crowd. We usually start with some kind of distraction device to say, again, listen up, stop doing what you're doing, move back, away from the police officers, please leave the area. Um, and if that doesn't work, then sometimes we can transition to riot control agents. Um, we understand that, that the riot control agent is it, it goes wherever it goes. Um, but I'll also say that the riot control agent, it, it, it really is uncomfortable in the moment when you're there. Pretty quickly after you get out of the area, that pain and discomfort goes away. Uh, it may take a few minutes, but it's a fairly short-lived effect. It accomplishes our goal of trying to get people out of the area without a long-lasting injury or a long-lasting effect on them. Uh, as opposed to, say, a pepper spray, where you spray something with pepper spray, that ten generally tends to last for a while. You know, my, my experience is about half an hour, uh, you're really uncomfortable. Uh, probably at least a couple minutes where you can't really see very well and then you're, you know, you're struggling to kind of function and you're in pain for probably half an hour. So, you know, we try to use the tools that get the job done with the least amount of injury uh, and, and the shortest lasting effect, if that makes sense. And who is, um, who's able to direct whether you use one munition over a distraction device? Is it the line officer in rapid response team or is it a sergeant or supervisor? 
Okay, so the, the question was, who gets to decide what munition is used? Is it a line officer, a sergeant, or someone else? So again, it's a little bit situational. So if you are an officer standing on the line, and somebody comes up and tries to assault you, or if we are moving the crowd and somebody pushes back, that line officer is going to make a decision to defend themselves, uh, and they may use their stick or pepper spray to, to change that behavior in front of them to stop the aggression or behavior. When we start talking about specialty munitions that, that I think we're talking about right now, generally uh, the grenadiers and the sergeants are the ones that carry those munitions. If there's an immediate danger in front of them that they're seeing, they have the authority and autonomy to use those munitions. And then generally they're talking, they're talking about the distraction devices, uh, the impact munitions, they'll use those in an emergency or you know, life safety issue without further authorization. When you start talking about the broad riot control agents, uh, in an emergency, you know, the field commander, so someone like the lieutenant or maybe a sergeant uh, out there, depending on what they're seeing, could deploy those munitions. But generally speaking, we coordinate that with everybody else, including the incident commander, because we recognize, you know, we need to coordinate that so everybody has had a chance to leave the area if possible. We've, we've tried to get the dispersal orders, have a sound truck, tell people, you know, leave. Uh, our folks have had a chance to take some safety precautions if we've got more field forces in the area. Uh, you know, we get them to wear their gas masks so they're not impacted. And, and really, we totally get that the, that's the last the measure of last resort, right? Because it affects so much of an area. And so the incident commander is trying to kind of maintain the overall uh, incident and, and manage the resources and accomplish priorities and strategies. They really need to have a say if they can before we make that transition. So, does that answer your question? Mm -hmm.